one of the biggest deciding factors about the level of tennis that you can play at is going to be your visual processing speeds because as the level of play increases the speed that the ball comes towards you increases so you've got less and less time to react and this is something that holds a lot of players back so there can be a number of different things that we might need to work on to improve your visual processing speeds but what I want to focus on in this video are assessing two really important visual skills that we find deficits in this area then it's going to present a big opportunity for ways to kind of help you react more quickly at the baseline. We're also then going to go through a couple of different training drills that you can use to start to address any deficits you find. And of course, if you didn't find any deficits, you could just start to do the training drills to improve function and again, speed up your reactions. I hope you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be great if you could give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, I uh, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. For the first assessment, we're going to be using a little bit of equipment called a Brock string, which is just a string with beads on. You can buy them very cheaply on Amazon or from other places. They're normally around five to 10 bucks. So I highly recommend that all tennis players do get one because it's such an important training tool. But if you don't have one, no problem. You can just use a bit of string, make one yourself. So a string plus beads, a string plus buttons, or you just get a string and tie knots in it. I've even done them with things like lightning cables. But then for the assessment, we are going to wrap the string around our finger. I've got one, uh, one end attached there, and now I'm just gonna pull it and kind of hold things still, and I'm gonna hold the string to my nose like so. So it's like that. Then, what I'm gonna be doing is looking at one of the beads, and this is something that we'll want to test at multiple different distances, but here I'm just gonna show you the initial assessment. Now we're assessing two things. We're assessing eye alignment, and we're assessing for visual suppression. So in case you don't know, our eyes are basically like camera lenses. Our brain's job is to point both of our camera lenses up because we've got muscles that move the eyes in different direction. So our brain points both of the camera lenses at the same target. So when you're tracking the ball, you've got to be looking at the ball all the way through. And by using the images from both camera lenses, both eyes, our brain is able to create accurate 3D vision. So we're assessing here, do our eyes actually point at the target that we want to point at? So what I should see is two strings going into the center of the bead and two strings going out of the bead. And we're seeing that because I've got one eye and one eye pointing at it. In terms of the eye alignment, you might find that the strings cross before the bead or the strings cross after the bead. If that happens, there is an issue with your brain's ability to line your eyes up on the target, and that's gonna really slow your reactions down. So it's something we would want to address. The second thing that we're assessing is the visual suppression component. So these two camera lenses, ideally your eyes should see both see clearly and your brain should use both of those images and blend them together but what happens sometimes is one maybe one of the eyes is a little bit blurry or the brain just isn't using both of the eyes well and instead of seeing with two eyes your brain starts to use the information from only one eye and then what happens there is instead of seeing two strings that are really bright you're going to see maybe one string that's bright and one string that looks a little bit faded or you know one string that's bright and then there's chunks of string that are missing or maybe it can switch back and forwards between two between two so one string's bright and then it's the other one and your brain can't figure it out so all those things are an indication of an element of visual suppression obviously for full visual suppression you'll only see one string but anything that isn't too evenly bright strings going in and two evenly bright strings going out is gonna be an element of visual suppression. It means your brain isn't able to use both of the images effectively together, which affects your ability to kind of judge 3D space and how far the ball is away and how fast it's traveling, which again is gonna to lead to slower reactions. For our second assessment, we're gonna be doing a pencil push-up assessment. So we need a pen or a pencil for this assessment. And we're gonna be assessing convergence and divergence. So convergence is as I bring the pen towards me, my eyes look together in coordination, that's convergence. And then divergence is my eyes moving away together in coordination. Both of them, really important skills, tell us about key parts of the brain in terms of creating, controlling eye movements, and in terms of visual spatial awareness. So very important for your ability to react quickly on court. Very common to find deficits in one or both of these in players. And even if we find a really small deficit, that presents a very big window of opportunity. It's a very simple assessment though. Hold it 
at arm's length. I've got my eyes focused on the tip of the pen and I'm slowly bringing it in towards the bridge of my nose. And I am aiming for the bridge of my nose. So you can see that my eyes are going cross-eyed together. So both of my eyes are pointing at the target. So it looks like I am cross-eyed. If you take it down there, it tests a different thing. If you take it up there, it tests a different thing. So we want right in between the eyes, slowly in and slowly out. And you can see that as I do that, I can keep my eyes pointing at the tip of the pen the whole time. I just see one tip of the pen. But what might happen for you and what we're assessing for is as you bring the tip of the pen towards the bridge of your nose, does the tip of the pen start to double? Because if one of your eyes isn't able to pull in, so say my right one's looking at the target, but my left one isn't pulling in properly now, because the left eye isn't able to do it, it's going to start to split in two and eventually double. So that's what you're looking for. For you, it might happen at this distance, it might be this distance, it might be this distance, but anything that isn't all the way in indicates an element of dysfunction. Now, when you do this, you want to watch out for compensations. So like I said, some people pull it into the tip of the nose, the bridge, you know, the forehead right in front of your eye to try and compensate, or they move their head forwards to try and compensate. And if you have visual suppression that we've just looked at a moment ago, it's sometimes possible for people to only be seeing one image. So they go all the way in and all the way out and they think they're doing it perfectly, but then one eye is pointing at it and one eye is in the opposite direction because the brain is suppressed. They don't realize that their eyes aren't both looking at the target. So this is an assessment that you definitely want to record yourself to see what is going on because it's gonna be very obvious when you watch it back on camera. So that's the convergence portion. In terms of divergence, as you take the pen away, it should stay as a single target, but for some people, the target is gonna split in two, maybe momentarily, so it'll kind of be one, 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 two, 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 one. So you have gotta pay attention on the way in and on the way out because with this sort of stuff, any deficit we find gives us a massive opportunity to help you react faster and become a better tennis player. Okay, how did you get on with the assessments? Like I just said a moment ago, any deficits that you find present us with a lot of opportunity to help you react faster and become a better player capable of higher level tennis. The good news is, both of those assessments actually turn into really effective training drills. So if you found there was a deficit with a pencil push-up, uh, either on the way in or on the way out, just practicing it over and over again can start to correct that problem. Now, make sure you don't cause yourself any eye strain, but you can challenge this. So we're training parts of the brain and we're, we're training muscles, and this is just like any other type of training. If you need to improve your leg strength and you're kind of working on some squats so you can have stronger legs so you can be better on court, if you use a weight and then it gets a little bit hard and you stop, you're not really gonna change all that much. It's gonna be the same thing with this training. So you're allowed to challenge it. You're allowed to work a little bit harder and really try and pull your eyes in to activate these muscles and brain areas. Just don't cause yourself any eye strain. Sometimes it can be, be really quick to correct the problem. Other times, not so much. But even if you, uh, and you might need to kind of explore other areas, but I'll talk about that in a moment. But even if you don't find any deficits with this, just practicing training this drill and kind of challenging it and building up the difficulty over time is gonna be really beneficial for you because you wanna make sure there are no problems. That's why I did the assessment. But then once you've got rid of the problems, it's about maximizing function. So you can just start to challenge this do more repetitions, challenge it with different head positions. There's all sorts of things that we can do to really improve your visual processing speeds and other visual skills. In terms of the Brock string, again, very effective training drill. Drill. If there was a deficit, often just by doing switching drills, you can correct it. So we use those three beads, set them at different distances, and just practice switching between the targets. And by doing that, you can help with the eye alignment and help to break visual suppression. And again, if you manage to break visual suppression, you don't have to stop there. We can use that as an advanced training tool to really improve your skills on court. But if you find that by doing it, you can't break visual suppression, that's okay as well, because like with the pencil push-up, sometimes we need to do additional testing to figure out what's going on and find ways to kind of switch things on and get things working. But it's normally very possible. If you would like help with it, that's basically what I do with tennis players. I use brain-based training to help players improve their skill and performance level. Because everything that you do on court is dependent on how well you can see. Reading the ball, ball tracking, it's all about vision and everything else is to do with your level of coordination. You know, if you're struggling with technique, 
might mean that you don't have the coordination to do what you do if you don't have good racket head control and that's all about coordination so we can do assessments to find out what's going on and we can train this stuff to massively improve your tennis level so if you'd like to learn more i've created a free uh, master class to teach you more about it i'll place a link up there and I'll place a link down in the description so you can check it out. It's a free masterclass, and if you sign up for it towards the end of the masterclass, it'll tell you a little bit about a program and how I work with players if that's something that you would like to explore. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Do these assessments. I would love you to leave me a comment and let me know how you get on. If you are going to use the training drills and start to work on things if you see improvements again come back let me know how you get on i love to hear that stuff that's why i make these videos for you there's lots of videos talking about the technique and it's all important but i know myself i understood technique but i just didn't have the ability to implement it and i learned about this brain-based training and everything changed that's why i try and show you these training drills as often as i can to encourage you to start to work on them because they really will help with your game so Leave me a comment down below and I'll catch you next time.